five. Here's Brian Higgins. All right, here we are rolling along on this Wednesday in the Qs. Continuing our friend Brown countdown to the football season. 59 days till the opening day. Math is hard. I don't, I don't feel like adding. A, it's then more days. It's then add all of September. Then add 12 more days. And we'll arrive at NC State as we continue our 12 games in 12 weeks preview of Syracuse football. And arrive now at what will be game six coming up on October 12th. And what I think many ways is going to be uh, the hardest game of the season. Road game. NC State coming off a road game in uh, Vegas. At uh, UNLV, this can be a tricky one uh, Saturday, October 12th. But right now, we'll uh, bring on the guy that will be calling that game on the radio for NC State. He's our friend, Matt Chaz. Now, Chaz, it's been too long, buddy. And, uh, great to have you back in the ACC here. This is going to be fun this year, huh? Yeah, hi. Is this the Armory Square Travel Advisory Hotline? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking for some information. I didn't know if I got the right number. Uh, yeah, if you, if you need a flight from... Uh, Washington State out here. We might be able to figure something else for you. Po- Palouse to CNY Direct. How about that? Yeah, yeah, that's like a shuttle. Hey, it's great to talk to you, Higo. Thanks for the welcome back to the league. And uh, when I left the uh, 315, it was not the ACC at the time. So uh, it's funny how things work out. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to be in it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely come full circle. You, you specifically see, have, seem to have landed right at the center of conference realignment. I, I don't know how uh, this has happened. Uh, Matt, for the last handful of years, was the play-by-play guy out at, at Washington State. So we'll get to NC State, but I, I want to talk about that first, Chaz, because uh, man, like you, you must have been a really weird last year out there at Washington State. What what has this all been like out on uh, the West Coast? With the, I, I think in many, I, I don't want to say many ways, in every way, a, a sad demise of the Pac-12. Bizarre, surreal, anxious, strange, surprising, and then not surprising, and then really, really good, and then really, really bad, and then. I mean, it's a roller coaster. Um, you know, Washington State's been in a really unique position. Uh, they have kind of locked their arms with Oregon State, but that's still not a lot of. Uh, that's a small party. You know, if it's yeah. a party of two, it's 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 a it's a little more intimate of a group than it is, say, what the Big Twelve has been doing when they lost Texas and Oklahoma. So, um, it's it's been wild. I don't think anybody ever envisioned the conclusion of. Yeah, technically Washington State and Oregon State are still in the Pac-12, and technically nobody else is. But uh, it's a, a really weird uh, situation. And like, man, I guess back in last August, right? Like we were kind of going along, minding our own business. We, you knew that U- USC uh, and UCLA had, had left for the Big Ten at that point. Did you see what happened coming? Was it was it a complete shock at the time last year? Or were there some tea leaves out there? Was like, uh oh, thing, things are getting uh, nasty right now. No, it, it, you know, there were tea leaves for a long time. You know, there, I think when you have the amount of smoke that was being drummed up by national controversy about TV media rights, and then there were trickled down effects of that from perception, but more importantly, probably just budgetary, right? And not just TV rights, but other rights that were owned by the league and mm-hmm. just things that weren't happening, things that weren't functioning the way that you want a league to exist to not just enrich the schools, but, or or I should say probably enrich the schools is a good way to put it, but not just financially. Like there are other ways to help schools out in your league in terms of, you know, basketball crossover scheduling or the way, you know, some, um, I don't know, tournaments are put on or, you know, and some things were great. Like the Pac-12 men's basketball tournament was a fantastic event. One of the, one of the best postseason basketball tournaments in the country when they figured out moving it to Vegas, it, it was not what it needed to be in LA. And then in Vegas, it was great. And so there were things that they did well, but in the end, the league for years would tell you if you were to put truth serum in the leadership and they were to speak publicly, which they haven't since the, all this went down, uh, they would, they'd tell you that it wasn't working right. And you know, the, the university presidents and the league commissioner, and they, they just couldn't get on the same page. And so 
No, there, there were definitely tea leaves. Like, elements of it were surprising, but you could see things coming. And, you know, sometimes when you see huge storm clouds, you know, hey, is that a hurricane or a tornado or a big lightning storm? Like, I, I don't know what's coming, but it's not good. Yeah, you I, could tell that. Uh, yeah, it was certainly bigger than just uh, a lot of rain, uh, what happened uh, right. last year. Uh, it obviously, and Matt Chasno with us, the new voice of NC State, but we're uh, talking now about his time at Washington State, which is just concluding. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's worked out the worst for Washington State and Oregon State. That that kind of goes without saying. But how, how do you foresee the path forward here for the schools that, that did find a lifeboat out, and specifically Stanford and Cal, who will be uh, joining the ACC? How, how do you think this is going to go? Because obviously, it, it's not easy being that far away from everybody else that you, you're doing business with all year long. I think it's going to be really hard. I think it's going to be really hard for Washington, which just had its baseball coach step down, UCLA, which had its football coach step down, um, Stanford had its women, women's basketball coach, the winningest coach in, in the history of the sport, mm-hmm. she stepped down or retired. Um, you had a, a mass exodus of Washington softball players, and they specifically mm-hmm. you know, alluded to the logistics, it's not what they signed up for. Cameron Brink said that for Stanford when she went to the WNBA. Um, I, I think it's going to be really hard. I think some schools will fare better than others. I think there will be a larger appetite for it from some kids, from some families, from some coaches. But I also think conference realignment is as old as college athletics. From Sewanee in the SEC, Tulane in the SEC, to you know South Carolina in the ACC, right? Not so, so, so long ago. Um, Penn State was independent, mm-hmm. right? Not that wildly long ago. Uh, obviously, Syracuse has realigned. Um, this is going to happen. This is what it is. I think that it's not the final resting place in a very contemporary sense. Like, I'd be really surprised if things just lock in and hold and calcify as they currently are just for a long, long period of time because it's just not how this happens. You know, and um, you can look back at the timeline of conference realignment, the Southwest Conference dissolving. Big East football, you know, these things definitely come in waves, and now they are directly related to TV money, and um, and that's even changing, right? Like Amazon and Netflix and Turner just cut a deal with the Mountain West, and shoot, the CW doing as much as it does with sports. That's new. And so um, I think streaming is going to change things, ESPN+, Plus, Peacock, I think Netflix was getting in on it a little bit, (laughs) I think. Um, Amazon Prime, certainly, with with the NFL, has has shown it has an appetite for it. Oh, well, Apple TV with the MLS, right? Mm -hmm. They they went all in. So um, it's it's changing and evolving, and it wouldn't blow me away, Higo, if in, like, not that long, you and I were talking on VR headsets for the visual 3D element of your show and – you know, that, that this whole thing is going to evolve and change, and I'm into it. Like, I'm here for it, and I just I, – what really pains me, and I hope in the end does not happen, is, is it devastates places like Washington State or Oregon State or Stanford or Cal or, you know, whoever, Oregon or Washington or UCLA football or whatever it is, like – I just wish that there was a way for it to feel like everybody was um, on the same page, you know, and that you're kind of, you're, you're, we're all in a college football community together. <laughs> and maybe that's too kumbaya. Maybe that's not realistic and it's business and it's competition and it's cutthroat. And, um, but I, I, you know, Illinois AD came out and was talking about being concerned about the next round of realignment essentially jettisoning them from the Big Ten. And yeah. um, I, I hate that. I, like, I think that stinks, you know, and, and I just hope that there's a way this resolves so that it's more all boats rise as opposed to a, uh, a you know, zero-sum game with a limited amount of pie to go around. Yeah, and well, your perspective here is uh, actively changing now, right, as you're going from Washington State uh, to NC State. So we got Matt Chasnow, the new voice of the Wolfpack, with us. So you'll be starting in, in Raleigh. Literally, you're flying across the country in a few days to, uh, to, <laughs> head, to head to uh, North Carolina. Uh, so what say you about uh, NC State's position of all this? Like, you, you don't know all the internal workings right now. You're just getting into it. But, you know, uh, from afar and now joining you, well, how, how do you feel the, uh, the Wolfpack fit into this whole puzzle? Really, 
as well and super strongly. I mean, that's not why I am taking it. And, you know, that's there's uh, all kinds of reasons why things occur. And it's an amazing opportunity of itself in a vacuum, you know, and then you, but to answer your question in the full context of all this, I uh, feel really confident. I mean, I think one of the things that is really different about the ACC and, um, you know, a lot of things that can um, go on with it is that the, the geography of it is all very smushed together, if you will, for, for you know, it's not a very eloquent way to put it, but um, there's some advantageous elements to that for the league itself and um, the way this is all going. You know, one of the issues with Washington State and Oregon State is they, they have a massive geography problem. Mm-hmm. They have the West Coast, if you just look at the map and the number of schools and west of the Mississippi, it just becomes harder to get places and um, harder for places to link up. So uh, the Mid-Atlantic and, and all that the eastern seaboard is with, you know, all the way from Syracuse to Miami, um, I, I think is in a more flexible place. You know, whatever happens, right? It just There's just more meat um, because of population density and just the way schools are set up. So you're, I am certainly not in the inner workings. You know, the, 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 the two, there's two hats I wear, right? And, and I know you know this as well as anybody. There's the, hey, how's the team doing? Well, let's, let's, let's talk before the game, you know, when the Wolfpack play the Orange. Mm-hmm. What's going on in practice? Like, okay, well, I've got, I was at practice and I talked to Coach Doran and, I, you know, there, there's going to be a different discussion. And then there's the conference realignment hat. And I'm like, well, I know the business, but I wasn't in those discussions. <laughs> you know, so it becomes a little hard, harder to just sound super authoritative. Yeah, different invite list to those uh, meetings exactly. and uh, events, how it goes. Yeah. All right, so let, let's do a little of this NC State football, which is the whole the reason why I reached out in the first place, so there's so much other interesting stuff going on. You mentioned Dave Dorn. He, he's going into, man, he's been there forever now. He's going into year 12. Uh, last handful of years, uh, last seven years, he's won at least eight games six times. He never broken through right for the double-digit win season, but they have been and I'd say a beyond solid program here of late. What, what do you make of where the Wolfpack, you know, football-wise are sitting in the ACC right now? Yeah, I mean, a lot of continuity. You know, you know, all the coaches are back for the most part. It's just, a, you know, everything that others don't have in continuity, NC State does. Um, of course, they've hit the transfer portal in some crucial spots. Um, I'm not going to, again, I'm, you know, this will be the least authoritative I ever sound on some of this because I've yet to go to practice. I got to go out there. And, uh, a lot of this is just what I've kind of scooped up via osmosis, but you, know, you got a transfer running back in waters. Raphael's still there. You have McCall, who's nicked up last year, but did a really nice job at Coastal Carolina. Heck of a career. Concepcion's back. You've got some additional transfer pieces. Like, they're, they're they should be able to score the ball and, and the defense has been great. And, you know, continuity, there was this great social media thing going around. Tom Brady was talking about how one of the things that the Patriots did best at in his payday there was with he and with Belichick were able to keep coming back. And whenever other teams would fire coaches because they'd become impatient or they would change quarterbacks or change coordinators because they lacked patience, you got to restart Right. And restarting is really hard. And in and of itself, you kind of self-sabotage. Right. And there's a there's an attention bump you get. And there's a kind of a just a natural curiosity with that type of change specific to sports. And, you know, part of it is because the money is so great and there's probably a larger appetite uh, to have less patience. And you want to, you know, coaches expect to get fired sometimes and all these things. Well, not doing that in and of itself is a huge advantage. Right. And so I I admire that. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited to to see it firsthand. Yeah. You know, I look at, uh, I was talking about this, uh, the start of the show today, uh, Jazz Stuart Mandel just wrote an article kind of like ranking how schools have been affected by all this change in in conference realignment. And whatnot, and he had a negative rank uh, uh, for Syracuse, but I was saying, well, man, you're out of the Atlantic division. You don't have to play Clemson and Florida state uh, every year. I'd say just that, that alone is a positive. Well, that the same too applies to NC State. Like you never had a path, a realistic path to make the conference title game, having to be ahead of both of those teams uh, every year. It feels like NC State, like this year, right? Like you don't have to be ahead of both Florida State and Clemson to make uh, the conference title game. That, that's a pretty good place to be in in itself right now. Yes, yeah, scheduling is in, is really important, and in there are certain formulas to this. Now, this is where I will wear that uh, more authoritative hat. There, there's some red flags with certain schedules. The Gators, for what it's worth, have one of these this year. Uh, yeah. You don't want to play three straight really hard games. The, 
third one gets you, even if you're like Georgia. It just you just wear down, right? And then um, there's also a formula with who's home, who's road. Road games are always hard, even if you're playing a air quote bad team. Um, and, and I think, you know, if you're a great team, you win everything. If you're a good team, you win a few road games. If you're, uh, you know, kind of, I don't want to say regular, but if you're just a more conventional um, squad, then you win your home games. You just protect home, right? And so I think that um, – NC State's schedule on paper lines up well that way. I will say this, though. One of the Mike Leach years at Washington State, when they won nine games, I think it was 2017, they played six straight backup quarterbacks. <laughs> and there's a, a UCLA game that was just a grinder. It was a 45-degree sideways wind, rainy, and, and I think Josh Rosen was a QB and he was hurt. And you can't account for that kind of thing. UCLA couldn't move the ball. You know, you just don't know what you're going to get. And so once you get to week four, five, six, seven, right right in the meat of the season there after the first month, it all becomes a little muddy relative to preseason expectations. Like right now you've got a decent shot at figuring out, and I'm thinking from the Wolfpack perspective, what's going to happen against Western Carolina and what's going to happen against Tennessee, right? Like we have a good sense of the squad. Now you want to see fall camp and you want to see practice. You want to see all these things, but, um, after that, you know, who's healthy, who's playing well, what are the trends, all these things are, are really important. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, Syracuse had many years where they, where they were playing six straight games starting a backup quarterback. That that never went <laughs> that, that yeah, went less well, well. That happens too, though. Yeah. That happens too. Yeah, you can't predict that. Uh, no, th- those were the years that didn't go well uh, historically. All right, Chaz, uh, o- always great to chat, my friend. Uh, we'll certainly do this more now that you're uh, in the ACC. Uh, safe travels uh, back to this side of the country, and we'll we'll have to talk again when we get closer to this game. But uh, always good to catch up. I love it. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Hago. Great to talk to you, buddy. There he is, Matt Chesno, uh, Syracuse grad, the new voice of the NC State uh, Wolfpack as we continue our six games in six weeks. Six games in six weeks. Twelve games in twelve weeks. This was the sixth week. That's how the... It's been a lot of math on the show today. This was the sixth game in our 12 games in 12 weeks preview of Syracuse football. What the heck is next week? What do we, uh, what's next week? What do we, what do we, what do we got next? NC State, Pitt. Huh. Well, we know Pitt. Back to normal. Road game at Pitt. We talk about the Syracuse football schedule. That I feel that's being penciled in as a win way too easily. I get Pitt wasn't very good last year. Uh, road game at Pitt, historically, not good for Syracuse in the last, uh, what's the word? Yeah, two decades. So uh, we'll talk about Pittsburgh at some point next week as we continue this series. With that, we'll step aside for a few. Come back, phone lines open next to 315-437-7644. Much more to do on a Wednesday here on Q Sports Talk and ESPN Radio.